every one of us wants to achieve the forgiveness of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that he will forgive everyone who seeks forgiveness. No matter what you've done, if you seek the forgiveness of Allah, you change your ways, you promise Allah you're not going to do it again, Allah will forgive you completely and always. And shaitan's plan is that he makes you repeat the sin. Out of human nature, you may fall again. But Allah's plan is that when you fall again, you come back again. And if you've fallen again, you come back again and so on. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Always seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have a major problem because we are taught that there are certain people Allah doesn't forgive. For example, the hadith of An-Nisf min Sha'ban, where it is reported that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all those besides certain people. If you want to achieve the forgiveness of Allah, save yourselves from the following. Number one, Al-Mushrik. A person who associates partners with Allah in worship, Allah says, I won't forgive that person. Look at the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were all Mushriks at one stage. They were all people who associated partners with Allah in the Meccan period. Those from Mecca. That's what they were. They were Mushrikeen of Mecca. Because they sought forgiveness and changed their ways, Allah forgave them. But we're talking of a person who passes away and he did not seek forgiveness or she did not seek forgiveness. Allah says, I can forgive everything, but shirk, I won't forgive. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrak bih wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha Allah has chosen and declared and dictated that he will not forgive association of partnership in worship with him. But besides that, he may forgive whatever he wills. I need to constantly ask myself, is this that I'm doing shirk? And don't be afraid of that question. And if there is something doubtful, the better thing to do is to leave it. Quit it. This is doubtful. I may earn the anger of Allah. If that is the case, I don't want to even risk earning the anger of Allah. I'll just leave it out. Let's move on. Besides shirk, there are certain things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when he forgives all people, certain categories he won't. The second one is al-mushahin. A person who holds in his heart grudge and hate and ill feeling and malice towards others. Clean your heart. My brothers and sisters, if you're a mu'min and you want paradise, clean your heart. Even those who you disagree with or those who disagree with you, just have a clean feeling towards them. Even people who hate you and who don't like you, in your heart, you don't need to have that enmity and hatred and malice and dirt, but rather you can stay away comfortably, but with respect, with dignity, with kindness, with good words. You see when there are two people and they don't like each other, you find one swearing the other, one backbiting about the other, and he is showing his enmity and hatred and the other is just saying, Alhamdulillah, how are you my brother? Salaam Alaikum, everything okay? And that's it. He doesn't say much more, but in his heart, he doesn't hold the grudge. He says, never mind. That's my brother. He doesn't like me. We have a misunderstanding. Perhaps Allah will one day sort out his heart. As for my heart, it's clean. That is a mu'min. You deserve Jannah. Do you know why? The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ once, he pointed at a companion who was walking away and he told his companions, if you want to see a person from paradise, that's the man. So they followed him trying to find out what exactly is he doing and so on. And they found subhanallah that this person was not doing more ibadah or extra things. But what he did say is there is only one thing I know that I do every night before I recline. I clean my heart of hatred, enmity, malice, jealousy, etc, etc against anyone else. And the Prophet ﷺ confirmed that that was a quality of Jannah. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, if you are able when you are reclining at night to clean your heart and there is no ghillun li ahad, that means there is no ill feeling against others, then do it. Allah will grant you the reward of it and the reward of it is Jannah. Subhanallah. Look at how Allah says he doesn't forgive shirk on one hand because that's the association of partnership in worship with him. And on the other hand, he doesn't forgive those who have ill feeling against his creation because Allah created and Allah put people in your, in your life in order to test you. We've said that many times. Allah makes you cross the path of a person to test you. Will you be just and fair or are you going to just vent and be a person who thinks that he is superior to everybody else? If that's the case, you won't achieve forgiveness that easily. Another quality that is mentioned is 
Al-Musbilu, Thawbah. A person who lengthens his clothing well below his ankles, it is depictive of pride. So the quality that Allah does not like is the quality of pride. When you are a person who is full of pride and you are proud, where you belittle others, in that particular case, it's going to be tough for you to be forgiven by Allah. Allah says, I don't like the one who is proud and arrogant. The Quran says that. In Allah, Allah you hibbu kulla muhtal fakhur. Allah doesn't like those who are, you know, haughty and they they uh, belittle others. They are proud. When the Prophet ﷺ once said, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال حبة من خردل من كبر. He will not enter paradise in whose heart is even a mustard seed's weight worth of pride. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they questioned, they said, O oh Messenger, we love our clothing, we love our conveyance, the homes and so on. What about that? So the Prophet sallam says, that is not a sign of pride. To have the best of clothing, to have the best of this and the best of that is not the sign of pride. The sign of pride is when a person rejects the truth and belittles others. Treat them like rubbish. Astaghfirullah. You treat someone like you are it and that person is nothing. Dust. You ignore them. You treat them like they are not even human beings. Treat people with respect. Allah will forgive you. Allah will forgive you for your shortcomings without even you knowing. I had a shortcoming and it was forgiven by Allah automatically. Because the Quran says, When you do good deeds, they will automatically wipe out your minor sins. Automatic. So keep on doing more and more good deeds. Remember on the day of judgment, Allah puts a scale to weigh your good and bad. It doesn't mean if you don't have any bad, that's the only time you're going to Jannah. No, you're a human. You will have some bad. But Allah says, when your good outweighs the bad, you go to Jannah. May Allah forgive us. Another one. Al-Qati'a, a person who cuts relationships with their family for no reason or for dunya purposes, because of money, because of wealth, because of some little misunderstanding, you cut relations with those we made you related to. When you're related to someone, who chose that relationship? You didn't. Allah chose it. Allah says, I'm going to test you. That's why I made this person who is a tyrant your father. Allah forgive us. May Allah not make us fathers who are tyrants. But even if your father is a tyrant, don't break relations unnecessarily. Obedience to parents within that which is reasonable is a duty of Allah has placed on our shoulders. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has always told us to be kind to your parents. Even if you disagree, someone was telling me that, but isn't Allah said, I'm not allowed to disagree with my father. He actually gave me money and he's sending me to buy something that was actually haram. So what should I do? Isn't we're not allowed to disobey? I said, listen, you don't ever be unkind to your folks, to your parents, but you can disagree. And you must disagree when they are wrong, when they're totally wrong. Look at all the prophets of Allah with their family members. A good example of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He said, oh, my father, I disagree totally with what you're doing. But he said it respectfully. He said it respectfully. Listen, you are wrong. I don't agree with you. The way you are heading, you are heading into hellfire. He told his father clearly. Ya abati inni akhafu Oh my father, I fear that the punishment of the most merciful will come to you and you become a friend of the devil. You choose a respectful means and a respectful way of disagreeing because you are never allowed to be unkind to your parents even when you disagree with them. And even if they are unkind, be kind, disagree politely. Worst comes to worst, walk away with respect. Don't be unkind. So that has got to do with Al-Aq. Al-Aq is different from Al-Qati'a. Al-Qati'a is a person who breaks relations generally with their family members. And Al-Aq is a person who is unkind to his or her own parents. You are unkind and disrespectful. Now, if for example, they are asking you to do something haram and you say, I'm not going to do it. Then your father says, you're not allowed to be disrespectful. You're being so disrespectful. You can smile and say, my beloved father, this is not disrespect. This is disagreement with respect. You're my father. I will not deny that, but I disagree with you respectfully. But if you disrespect your folks and your parents, it's going to be very hard for Allah to forgive you. Another quality that is mentioned there is a mudmin, a person who is addicted to intoxicants of any nature. And they don't even have a plan to actually quit it or to seek the forgiveness of Allah. And you're coming in, for example, on an auspicious occasion. People are all being forgiven, but you're not being forgiven. Why? There's a problem. 
there's a barrier subhanallah what is that barrier you don't have an intention to quit the bad that you are addicted to in terms of that which is intoxicating or sinful you don't have an intention Remember one thing, when you are doing something wrong habitually, as a mu'min, at least feel in your heart what I'm doing is wrong. Wallahi, that feeling will save you. Because the first time you committed the sin, you feel guilty. The second time, the guilt is less. The third time, the guilt is even less. The fourth and fifth and sixth time, you don't even feel it's a sin anymore. It just becomes nature. So Allah says, when you feel bad with your sin, it's a sign that you're a believer. Why would I feel bad? Because I love Allah. I have a weakness, but I love Allah. I want him to forgive me, strengthen me, and don't just make dua. A brother had a very bad habit of going to the clubs every weekend. So we met him and we started talking and I said, brother, just quit this habit. He says, make dua. I tell him, are you insulting yourself or me? Oh, are you insulting Allah? Dua is very important, I agree. But you can't just say, make dua, make dua, and two years have passed and you're still telling people, make dua, and you still keep on going. They making dua and you keep going to the clubs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Make an effort. Learn to improve. If you haven't been for a whole month, thank Allah. Don't go. And if you end up dropping and going after a month, make sure the next time it's not just a month, it's way beyond a month that you don't go. And I'm not saying keep going at longer intervals, but I'm saying you need to see an improvement. And then you say, make dua, I'm trying. I haven't been for so long. Like my buddies, astaghfirullah, who smoke. Smoking is a bad habit. You're still my buddy, but it's a bad habit. Quit it. Quit it. So if you were smoking 20 and you suddenly dropped to 10 and then you smoke every alternate day and then you smoke one a week, I'll tell you, my brother, you are there. Just cut the one a week. And the uncle will tell you, no, if I don't have this one here, I will get so cross. I'm going to beat up my wife. What an excuse. What an excuse. You, you down to one. The one uncle says, I need a cigar. Otherwise, these people are in trouble. I said, uncle, you know what? With that cigar, you are in trouble. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. 